there's a whole lot of fear going on, a whole lot of speculation and a whole bunch of uncertainty. And what do we do with all of that? Good question. If we're Christ followers, our solution is turning to him and focusing on him rather than the speculations and the rumors and even the prices that we're seeing at the gas station and in the grocery stores and the lack of supplies that we need to do different things. And that can kind of be fearful, but you can look at it another way. That's what I want to talk about. We can partner with God and he can help us to stretch that dollar until our pennies squeal. Or um, we can also partner with God in listening to his voice when it comes to what we listen to and what we pay attention to. I can't change the gas prices. I can't change the food prices. I can't change, sometimes when I try to order something, I can't get it anymore. That's perfectly okay because God's got solutions for all of those things. One thing that I have noticed, stressful Christians are usually the ones who consistently focus on the things that make them nervous or intimidate them or bring anxiety. They focus on those things rather than looking to the consistently faithful and all powerful and all sufficient God that they claim to be their provider. Once we turn to him, it's amazing the changes that will take place. Now, most of you guys know that I uh, lived as a missionary for many years, and ever since then, I've been living on disability pensions, which doesn't provide a lot of money. So I've had to learn ever since my very earliest days on the mission field how to be frugal and how to eat healthy at the same time, and I'm able to do it. Uh, it requires a little bit of work, uh, and it requires a little bit of faith, uh, but all we need is that faith the side of a mustard seed. So I just wanted to share with you a couple of tips that I do. I'm not going to be showing you guys on video exactly how I do stuff because, to be honest, it's just too difficult for me to edit all of that kind of stuff uh, and get the angles right and then get stuff out. So I'm just doing it. So if you want to take notes, take notes, get a pen and paper and let's go for it. I want to share with you some of the tips that I use on a regular basis. Number one, stretch your protein make soups, make stews, add a lot of healthy, nutritious vegetables to your soup. You can disguise those vegetables if you've got kids. I'll give you a couple of tips on that to begin with. Your kids don't like vegetables. They can spot a carrot, a minuscule size of an atom. What do you do with them? If you're at home, you got a blender, cook the vegetables, until they're soft, stick them in the blender with a little bit of the soup base or the tomato sauce or whatever you're making and blend it until it is completely smooth. The kids have no idea that there's vegetables in there. The second tip is a Mennonite friend of mine when I was a teenager, she lived outside of Calgary. She had nine brothers and sisters, so that's 10 kids in the family. And they lived on a farm, but they still had to be careful with their food even back then. One tip that her older sister gave me, and I've been doing this ever since, was get a large size Ziploc bag, freezer quality, and put all of your chicken bones in there. If you roast a chicken, debone the chicken, put the bones in there. Even if you have chicken thighs or whatever, drumsticks, you eat them, put them into the bag. It's okay, you're going to be using those in a stock where any germs are going to be completely gone by the time you're finished with the, with the process. Number two, in that bag, put things like washed yellow onion skins in there. Peel those papery things off your raw onion if you're using them. Wash them well. Stick them into the same Ziploc bag. Do the same thing with carrot peelings. 
any type of vegetable peeling you can put into that Ziploc bag and seal it. Celery tops are unbelievably nutritious. Do not throw them away. It's an old wives' tale that um, they're not good for you to eat. They're actually highly nutritious. And wherever that rumor got from, I don't know. But put those in your stock pot or in your Ziploc bag if you're not going to be using them. And I use them in salads. I chop them fine and toss them in a salad and they add a lot of tastiness to them. Uh, what other things could you, like any vegetable that you peel, wash the peelings, save the peelings. I know you're going, well, aren't they bad for you? No, they're not. What about potato peelings? No, 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 unless your potato is green, you shouldn't be eating it, number one. Uh, but that's the only time that you can't use a potato pe peeling in your Ziploc bag. So what you do, once you get that whole bag full of chicken bones, and all of your peelings, put them into a stock pot or your instant pot. Cover them with cold water. Add uh, like a half a large onion, two or three stalks of celery. Don't bother chopping them at all because you're not going to be eating these things, right? Just make sure that they're clean. Another thing, this is a good place to use that celery outside stalks that start to get a little bit brown. Throw them into your um, stock pot too. As long as they're not soft, they're perfectly good for you, for you to eat. Everything into the pot. Everybody into the pool we're about to play. So you put them into your Instant Pot. If you do it that way, set it on manual for at least two hours. I forgot to mention this. You can hear a siren in the background, can't you? I live on a very busy street. So this is another reason why I don't like to edit a lot because I'll be there forever trying to get that out. Back to the story. Add a couple of teaspoons of apple cider vinegar to the bones. Why? Apple cider vinegar draws out all of that good marrow out of the bone. Cover all the vegetables on the bones. Set it on manual for at least two and a half hours, two to two and a half hours at the very least. If you're doing it in a stock pot on the stove, again, the same thing, uh, the apple cider vinegar, cover the stock pot, uh, cook for at least six hours, if not longer, on medium heat. You don't want it to be boiling rapidly, but you do want it to be simmering. That's done. How can you tell it's done? The bones should be unbelievably soft. The very hard shell of your leg bones might still be hard, but when you squish it, it feels really squishy on the inside. That means all of the goodness of the bones is out. And look up bone broth to find out how good it actually is for you. It's extremely healthy. So what you do next, you need to strain all of that, all the bones, all of the vegetables, all of that kind of stuff. Strain it, keep the broth, it's golden. Yay, especially if you put the onion skins in. Stick that, let it cool enough so you can put it to your fridge. Leave it in the fridge overnight and skim off the fat from the chicken stock. And then you can put those into, again, I use Ziploc twist storage containers and I keep them in my deep freeze and they stay forever in there. Uh, well, not forever, but because they usually use them up pretty much. But I recently did that and I got 12 cups of really good chicken stock out of that. Then dump. If you got a compost pile, let this stuff cool, dump it on your compost pile. If you don't have a compost pile, just put it into a plastic shopping bag or whatever and put it into your outside garbage as soon as you can because it will start to get a little bit smelly. Here's another tip. If you've got enough room in your freezer, freeze that sucker until you're going to be going out to the outside trash. No smelly kitchen. Have patience. I guess that's the biggest thing. 
another one if you're single like I am, don't be afraid to use dehydrated vegetables. I buy jars of dehydrated onion, cost efficient for me like you would not believe um, because it's difficult for me to chop. Somebody passed on this little tip that you can actually freeze chopped on onion, use it for things like soups and stews. You couldn't use it for something like a raw salad. You can do the same thing for celery. So the soup I wanted to share with you is one that I make quite often and it stretches forever. Um, I get nine or 10 large servings from this because it's mostly vegetables, but there's enough meat in there that I feel like I'm getting enough protein. So I call it easy, frugal Mexican salsa soup. I get a big bag of broccoli slaw. If you're from Canada, you can get it at Superstore. I'm sure that Sam's Club and other places would have it. It's just broccoli made into a law. It's got cabbage and a little bit of carrots. I use that as a soup base all of the time. You know, I can make a soup out of that very easily. Soup. I also use frozen cauliflower. I use frozen spinach. You could add fresh. You know all those chicken bones? you got to get them from somewhere. Where I get them are two places. I either buy a whole chicken, which is more expensive raw than it is for you to use a rotisserie chicken. I don't understand why. Maybe it's because it's not as much meat on the rotisserie chicken because they pump it full of <laughs> water. Either or. Cook it whatever way you want to cook it. If it's raw, roast it, steam it, instant pot it, whatever, because you're not looking for looks for this project. So what I do, I use the instant pot uh, for a large chicken. I will put things like some onion, onion flakes, celery flakes. Uh, even if I've got some carrots hang hanging around, I don't eat a lot of carrots but I'll put them onto the bottom of the Instant Pot and then I will put the chicken itself on a divot or what I am using, I'm using a silicone basket that you can use in your Instant Pot. I put the chicken inside of there. Why am I doing that? Why that extra step? So when the chicken is done, I can just lift it from the basket and it's a lot easier to debone that way. Speaking of deboning your chicken, that's where I got my chicken bones for my stock. Yeah, they've cooked, but they're going to cook some more when you make the chicken stock. Keep the skin even. Put it into the freezer bag. It adds a lot of flavor. You're not going to see that in the soup. So once the chicken is deboned, completely shred it or cut it up into bite-sized pieces. I will then put them into Ziploc bags to about two cups per bag, maybe a little bit more. And I will freeze that until I want to make soup. So here we go with the soup recipe. One can salsa, medium size, whatever spice you want. Number two, four cups of that delicious chicken stock that you made, or you can buy it in the carton, six cups broccoli slaw, one package frozen spinach, four cups cauliflower rice, whichever one you want to use, four tablespoons dehydrated onion, three stalks of celery cleaned and sliced into about a quarter to a half inch thickness. Dump all those into your stock pot along with your chicken and add about a good tablespoon of garlic. I like to use the Costco Kirkland brand garlic that you can find in the spice area. And whatever spices that you want to add to it. I added a little bit of hot sauce to mine because my salsa was mild. I added one packet of chili seasoning mix. So you add everything into your Instant Pot, put the lid on it, and let it go for about one hour. And when it comes out, it'll be soupy, the broth will be tasty, and if you want to fancy it up, if you're not low carb like I am, with each serving, sprinkle a little bit of Mextex cheese, 
and uh, maybe a dollop of sour cream, and you've got a great meal. You can serve with bread, or uh, you could replace cauliflower with rice. One more tip. If you're trying to stretch your dollar, peel a potato and shred it and add it to your soup at the beginning, and it will thicken up that soup, and it will stretch it a long way. Then I portion all of that out into individual portions and stick them into my f freezer, and you've got a lot of very hearty, filling, highly nutritious meals. If you're doing it on the stove top, then you will need to stir it quite a few times within one hour just to make sure that the tomatoes and the salsa do not scorch the bottom of your pot. So I hope that helps you guys. There's so many ways you can partner with God in stretching your dollar so you're eating nutritionally. Don't fall for the cheap food items in your grocery store. Isn't it amazing that frozen pizza has hardly gone up in price? Our potato chips or other types of junk food, it's not interesting. Gee, I wonder why. Anyhow, guys, bless you all, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.